Welcome to the Twilight Zone, the zone where the unknown is made known with stories involving real people and real places. On Revelation TV, the finest. If you're searching for how to master and flow in the supernatural, this is a program for you. So, call anyone you know, especially the unbeliever, who wants to make sense of the supernatural to tune in right now. Because tonight, we will start breaking things down. We are live and interactive on all the social media platforms. You can email us with your comments and questions. And my question to you now is, have you ever had any supernatural encounters that you would like to share with us on this program? If yes, kindly email us on live at revelationtv.com. Hello and welcome to the Twilight Zone, the zone where the unknown is made known. And on the Twilight Zone with me tonight is our dear, lovely sister, Sylvia. Yes. Hello. Hello. You forgot to say where real people... Yeah. <laughs> you, you, can, you can complete that. <laughs> ah, I forgot. It just went out of my head. <laughs> where we talk about real people and real places. Real places. Yeah, it was, it was on, in the intro. Yes, I like to say it again. <laughs> <laughs> the well, zone where the unknown is made known <laughs> with real people and real places. Yes, that's right. It, we've been saying it for so many years. I don't yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, today we have a great program coming up and um, it's going to be quite very exciting. So make sure that you, all, you have your questions ready as we um, as commence the interview so that we have time to read, you know, as many as we can. So God bless you. Yummy. Yeah, the title of tonight's program is The Redemption of an African Warlord. Uh, <laughs> several years ago, I was with a brother of mine, a, a brother in the Lord called Mark Stone in Cobham, and he gave me this book. He said, have you read about this man before? I looked at the book and I saw the name Joshua Blaye. And I said, I know this guy. I was the first person to interview him after the Liberian War. When he was in Ghana, my wife and I, we interviewed him together on a, on a program called The Twilight Zone on Vibe FM. I said, I know him. So he gave me the book. I read the book. And somehow we got reconnected again with uh, this great man of God. And it's been really, really <laughs> wonderful. Well, he is called uh, Evangelist Joshua Blaye, but also known as General Butt Naked yeah. because he was into voodoo. He fought in the Liberian War. Like as I wrote earlier today, over 20,000 people were killed by his unit during that war. Mm. So tonight we have him, we have the, we're really honored to have him here to talk about his journey in life and how he ended up. He ended up in the hands of the wrong people. And I remember when we interviewed him on Vibe FM in those days. Yeah. Even, even CNN interviewed him, yeah. BBC interviewed him. There's a documentary that's been put together by CNN, which is on YouTube about mm, him. Mm. And, um, and, and I remember, you know, we, when he was sharing with us how at the age of 11, he was initiated into voodoo, into, right. into voodoo itself. Yeah, yeah. And he said um, he went, he was taken out into the countryside by his uncles, mm -hmm. and they were by this massive rock, and they chanted and chanted for hours. Mm. And these things, we know they happen in Africa because <laughs> there's some serious powers yeah, out there. Yeah. It's that suddenly this rock lifted up. Mm -hmm. And when it lifted up, they told him to go in. And he walked in and the rock came down. And he was under that rock for 11 days. That's one day for each year of his mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. But whilst he was there, he was being fortified mm -hmm. spiritually for the battle of life. That's right. And then he came out and his life was never the same. Well, it must have been a terrifying experience for a young boy at that age, because at the, you know, at the age of 11, you know, you're still, you're, 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 you're a child, and yeah, to, it, to experience something like that yeah, but, must have. It, it, but the thing is, you know, like when you're dealing with African elders, mm. you trust them. You trust them, you believe that, well, they are, they are there to look after you. Just like Isaac trusted, I, he trusted Abraham. Mm -hmm you know, when Abraham was actually going to sacrifice him. So that's why in those days when we were younger, we had to have incisions on our wrists, yeah. our faces, our head. For, they say for protection. And you just mm. believe and you trust these people. And um, 
So he got involved in all these things and then great things happen. So you know what? Not to take too much of your time, we have <laughs> uh, evangelist Joshua Blahi, also known as General Butt Naked. <laughs> you are looking so serious tonight, but you're looking fresh now. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, sir? <laughs> what well, I'm good. Bless God. Hallelujah. Amen. Before you came on, I was telling them that we interviewed you first before the CNNs of this world and the BBC came looking for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is, that is you. Your, your show was my first interview outside Liberia. So it make it my first international interview. Amen. Amen. And it, was, it, it, it had a great impact on, on so many, you know, and we thank God for your life. And it's really good to see you again. So um, for the sake of those who um, have not ob uh, obviously met you before, um, would it be possible for you to just let us know um, your, about your background, where you're coming yeah. from, and um, the experience you had, especially when you were a child? All right, no problem. So tell us about yourself. Well, okay. Uh... As you already said, I'm evangelist Joshua Milton Blahi. Mm -hmm. uh, I am a, a born Liberian. Yeah. Uh, I am from the crime tribe. Okay. Liberia have 16 tribes. And uh, the crime tribe in Liberia is known as one of the warring tribes. Okay. And they have several sects in the in the Crown tribe. I'm from the Sapo sect. In the Sapo sect, we have six different sections. And the priestly section is where I'm from. Mm. Well, in the uh, in ancient days, men survived by conquest. They captured towns, captured cities, and uh, suppressed everyone there mm. and uh, make them to denounce their gods, make them to forgo their culture, mm. and they are introduced to new culture. And so my tribe, the sect I came from, conquer almost all of the crown tribes around and make them to submit to the gods called Nyagbeyawe, wow. which is the gods of my direct forefathers. Hmm. Hmm. So for many years, Nyagbeyawe became the chief gods amongst the crown tribe. Okay. And uh, Yangbeawe only have uh, elite priests. They never had former priests. Hmm. Everyone who will uh, be the priest will die before wow. a new priest is chosen by Nyagbeyawe. Mm. So more than 150 years, Nyagbeyawe became the gods, mm. the biggest gods among the crown people. Okay. The priest before me died. And the mantle hmm. to be the priest fell on my own father. Okay. My father answered his call hmm. from being chief accountant at the Ministry of Finance hmm. with serious education hmm. and wealth. 
he he then uh, went to the village to answer this call. Mm. But the oracle rejected him, the gods rejected him, the elders rejected him on the ground that he was wealthy mm. and educated. Okay. So uh, they asked him to bring his first son. Mm -hmm. I am not the first son to my father. Okay. My father was married to a woman from the north, his legally wedded wife. Mm -hmm. And his wife gave birth to his first son, mm -hmm. who is called Benenik. Mm -hmm. So Benenik was taken to the uh, oracle but the elders rejected Benedict on the ground that Benedict would trade the powers of the tribe because his mother was not from the tribe. The mother was from the, Lo the Loman tribe wow. that is from the northern part of Liberia. Hmm. So they insisted that my father must have a child by a woman from his tribe. Mm -hmm. Well, my father agreed, but because he was afraid to make any other mistake mm -hmm. so that this whole assignment would be over for him to face his life, mm -hmm. he told them to choose the woman. Wow. And so the elders cast their lot. Mm -hmm. They cast their lot and it fell on my mother. Mm -hmm who was already married with two children. Wow. So tradition insisted that mm -hmm. my mother left her husband, wow. joined to my father, gave birth to me, mm -hmm. and returned to her husband. Wow. And that is how I was born. Wow. 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 That's serious. It is. By the age of 11, you said something dramatic happened where you were taken out to a rock. Hmm. Can you just briefly tell us about that? So my mother kept me for four years and turned me over to my father who kept me for three years. At the age of seven, my father turned me over to the ancestors. To the wow. elders. Wow. Hmm. And they train me for four good years. In Liberia, we have the traditional school hmm. that people go to for three months, six months, nine months, at most one year. But I went to this school for four good years. Wow. And for four years, I never saw the sunlight. At six in the morning, I will be blindfolded wow. until seven in the evening. And so I was trained for four years to not move by sight, but to move by my instinct. Wow. At the age of 11, the elders prepared me for my priestly role mm -hmm. after training me for four years. Uh, many people were trying to usurp the position of a priest. Mm. They would pretend they got powers and they will go to the elders. The elders will take them and give them the chance to be the priest. When they enter, Mm -hmm. The arena, so Legne will shoot, will, will flack, will kill, will smack them, or other mayhem will happen to them and they will die. Wow. And so when it was time for me as a priest, the elder escorted me to the gate to enter the arena. This place is just about 300 meters, the rock. Is just about 300 meters away from the gate, from the fence. 
But it took me three days and three nights before I reached to the rock. Wow. The environment was so tense with spiritual heaviness, hmm. spiritual density, hmm. that it took me three days to cover three days, three nights to cover 300 meters. 300 meters is just about the size of a football field. When I reached to the front of the rock, I received orders to stand up. And as I stood up, the rock literally lifted up. Wow. Very huge rock. Hmm. Huge rock. A rock more than... Uh, uh, four to five hundred feet wide hmm. and more than a seventy five to eighty feet tall. Hmm. This rock literally lifted up and a platform came from under the earth. And the voice commanded and asked me to stand on this rock. I stood on the rock. The rock went under the earth. The, the, stood, the platform went under the earth and the rock came back over me. Hmm. The place under that rock was darker than dark, than description. It was dark beyond description. Even though I could see as far as my sight could behold. And all of a sudden, I saw a very huge personality, hmm. a huge deity. This man was about 11 to 12 feet tall and very gigantic. Even though his entire left side is paralyzed, hmm. so he walked like dragging his left side. He had a wing that was broken and he folded that wing on his arm from the left side and the right side, the wing just lie on his back. But this deity could walk as fast as he could, very fast, faster than anything, you know, that I know. Mm. However, he came from my back and he told me I was welcome. My son, you are welcome. When I look at him, he started revealing to me things about my life. He made me to turn against almost everyone that matters to me at the time, making me to see how they did not care about me. One year, the first day, he revealed to me things, carelessness of my parents, all through when I was one year old. The same thing when I was two years old, three years old, up to when I was 10 years. On the 11th day, he told me that's how he demanded that I come so that I can face in my divine purpose. However, he made me to see other priests before me hmm. that was being punished because of this obedience. Wow. Some of them were turned upside down and fire was being lit on them. Wow. Their sweat was pouring out of their body. Hmm. Some of them were speared all over their bodies and stuck to a tree wow. in angony. Hmm. He told me 
those were the disobedient priests. Wow. And then he showed me, he took me to his, his dining table where all the priests sat on the ground. The table is also, you know, just about two feet from the ground. And he was like in a chair, like, but the chair was also low, you know, mm -hmm. uh, 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 to the level of the table. And he asked me to sit at the other end of the table. He introduced all those other priests to me, former priests to me, as faithful priests. Mm. And that's why they were enjoying what they were enjoying. Mm. Okay. Well, then he asked me which one of them that I want to come after. Of course, I said I wanted to come after the faithful ones. Mm. Okay, um, by a man of God, time is really, really flying. And we need to really go into the nitty gritty. Uh, we understand that background and those kind of strange things that happen. But then how did you come about the name General Butt Naked? Well, uh, when I was, when I stayed 11 days out there, I came out and I was the priest of the tribe. Hmm. This was 1982. Two years earlier, Master Sergeant Samuel Kayando had overthrew Torba. So he was the head of state of Liberia, but he was a crown man. So he automatically became my subject. Hmm. So I was advising him. So all of his dictatorship and all of the negative rule, some of them was advices that I gave him. Hmm. So when the war came, I was invited to come to protect him as a priest. Mm. I came in Monrovia with two traditional warriors and another priest like myself. So we were two traditional priests wow. and two traditional warriors controlling two different fronts. Doe died and the tribe ran into exile. Mm. When the tribe came back, as Unimo, they contacted me. There was not much ammunition. The tribe did not have money. They never had ammunition. So as a priest helping the tribe, I have to play two different roles. I was a priest and a warrior. Before I performed my warrior duty, I needed to cleanse my priestly throne by making, you know, a sacrifice of an innocent child. Wow. But as I went on the front, I needed to naked myself. I naked myself because it is easy to access any spiritual power or display any spiritual power when you are not materially attached. For example, when I was naked, it took me 18 to 30 seconds to disappear. When I had on clothes, it took me from two minutes to three minutes to disappear. Because material by itself and its consciousness is a hindrance hmm. to any spiritual world. Wow. wow. So because of this, I, need, I needed to take off my clothes to use minimum spiritual currency, if hmm. I will call that, call it that way, hmm. to perpetrate huge and effective spiritual action. Hmm. 
every spiritual display is power. It's, it's like something you are expending. You are expending the life of another. So every time you display those powers, you need time. The shortest time, the, 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 cheapier, the cheapest it will be. So I needed to go naked to be able to manage my spiritual currency, if I will put it that way. And so when the, when the American journalists succeeded in taking my photos, and they put me, they wanted to put me on a local newspaper called The News, they had no name for me. So the only name they could recognize, the, gen the only name they thought they could describe me by mm -hmm. was The Naked General. So that's how I was called General wow. Bob Naked. Wow. Wow. But then uh, your group was was really, really brutal. Uh, you, know, I, I, you know, I learned you, you, you know, your group killed over 20,000 people. So how were you able to reconcile with these people, with families of these people when the war ended? Okay. I have close to 78 men under me but I never went to the front with every one of them. Most of them were infants because they needed to be spiritually pure. Wow. They needed to be virgin mm. to display or enjoy the protection that I was offering. Mm. And so I took them to the front by 18. Mm. Every pre-battle ritual, I will prepare the toughest and the most alike 18 person mm. to follow me into this battlefront. Wow. So how did you eventually come to know the Lord? You know, after all these things that happened to you, what happened? How did you know God? Well, uh, it's, a, it's, it's the most crucial, you know, uh, part in my testimony. And so I always love to take it in whole. Okay. Well, a day came and the battle was so intense against us. Normally, the elders would bring the innocent child for the pre-battle ritual. This day, the battle was so tense against us and the elders tried to find a child. For more than three hours, they could not find a child for sacrifice for the ritual. And a mother about the age of 30 to 33 brought me her three years old daughter. Understanding the culture and the tradition, she brought her three years old daughter. Hmm. And for the first time in my 14 years of making serious human sacrifices, it was the first time that my conscience pricked me. Mm. It was the first time that I thought the child did not need to die mm. because she was so beautiful, so innocent, and she was even smiling at wow. me. Wow. Because every other children that was brought would already be rough out before the elders brought them. But this child thought her mother would not give her to anyone evil. So she was even smiling when she was being turned over wow. to me. I kept this child for hours, hoping the elders would bring different sacrifice. But the mother came back and appealed to me that if the girl did not meet the qualification of the gods, I should please beg the God to accept her so that she will save her people. And I always love to clarify that this woman was not a wicked woman. This woman understood her culture, understood her God, and was willing to make any sacrifice. Wow. 
to be in good standing with her God. And so I always believe that if I could see this woman today and encourage her to be Christian, she will make any sacrifice for Jesus. Mm -hmm. Unlike we, the church, who some of us cannot even sacrifice our sleep for Jesus. We cannot sacrifice even our clothes that we have not worn for three months, six years, to give it to people mm -hmm. for Jesus. This woman was willing to sacrifice her daughter for a dead God. However, I could not ignore her appeal. I took this child to the to the to the sect to the to the altar to be slaughtered and perform the ritual as usual. Mm. And the blood stain of this little child was still in my hand when my boys went for water, and I heard a voice behind me. I was seated in a cushion chair, big cushion chair, and the voice behind me spoke to me in my dialect. And say, Andrew, there, Kaylee, that is my son. Why are you slaving? When I look back to see where this voice came from, it came from a man four to five feet suspended from the ice, standing in the cloud, but was brighter than the sun. I was forced to bow down my head to talk to this man because he was so bright that I could not look at him for the split of seconds. Mm. I was trying to see him and picture him through the cloud that he was standing in that reduced the ray. And this man was Jesus. Mm. That's why I'm convinced about the scripture that says, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hmm. Whether you do it now or you do it after death, every knee will surely bow hmm. and every tongue will confess. Hmm. And when this man told me, my son, why are you slaving in my local tone because I could not speak in niche? I thought I was a king and was like angry, why would he call me a slave? But the word he used in my dialect for my son is so powerful that I overlooked the insult and continued talking to him. and said, why would he call me a slave when I'm supposed to be called a king? He said, you rightly say you're supposed to be called a king, but you are living like a slave. I say, I don't understand. He said, a king's seven supposed to be at his first two. Why? My own seven is on my shoulder. So I should drop that seven of mine and enjoy my kingship. Talking about the devil. And I still say, I don't understand. And then he said, repent and live or refuse and die. Mm -hmm. And then he vanished. And that present worried me because I'm not supposed to talk to any other gods or have connection with any other gods besides the gods of my father. And so I was so worried, so, so worried that I have broken the law. And even though every night the gods of my father came and from 12 o'clock to 4 o'clock we went so far traveling, but he will come. And he would never ask me about that. When he leave, then I will remember that, wow, I'm supposed to talk to Nabeawe about this strange God. Why is he not talking about it? Mm. And that worried me for almost two months. And then a group of young people that were praying called the Soul Winning Evangelistic Ministry received a prophecy. They were praying that God should end the war and destroy all of the generous. As they were praying against me, they received a prophecy that they should not pray against me, but pray for me because he go have arrested me for his purpose. Wow. And these guys took 54 days fasting and praying. And finally, on the 30th of September, 
1996, which is my biological birthday, I received the Lord Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. That's how I knew the person I met on the bridge, on the front line, was the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's how I received him as my Lord and my Savior. Wow. That's that is serious. Cool. Yeah. Wow. Now, <laughs> tell me, then after you got born again, a lot of people in Liberia, they heard about this general butt naked, and some heard you got born again. Were they, did, could they, did they believe you, believe that you're, you're truly born again? Yes, a lot of people did not believe it. Uh, even Mr. Taylor thought it was a political game. My tribe also felt betrayed hmm. that I, I was given the power for the tribe to protect the tribe. And I was, I got convicted and they believed I was uh, exposing all of their powers, all of their, 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 their strength. Hmm. And so they were after me. Other people too who are killed their relatives, their families came after me. So my life almost every day or every other week was a death threat. Mm, mm. And that's how I escaped from Liberia and went to Ghana. Okay. Well, before I went to Ghana, there was a major war in Liberia called September 18. Mm. And Mr. Taylor uh, projected that I went that I was fighting and came after me and everybody thought I was going to escape. But I stayed in the country and convinced, and the Lord protected me mm. and convinced the people. I went on a local show and tell them that if Mr. Taylor want to kill me, he will only kill me because of the past. Mm -hmm. That two years earlier, because this was 1998, that I fought against him and frustrated most of his plans. So he might kill me for that. But to tell, they say I went back to fight, it was a lie. And I think that was a very brave action that the Lord led me with. Yeah. And some people, believe me, pastors started inviting me now to their churches to give my testimony. Mm. But I was not fluent. Like, you remember when I met you in Ghana, I could not even, you know, uh, I have not developed, you know, uh, uh, by communication. I was not this, you know, fluent yeah. in English, you know, even though I'm growing every day and still hope to grow, but I was not effective. However, I left the country because of repeated threats mm. that was on my life, even in Ghana. When I was there, I went on a refugee camp and my tribe thought I should die because they would never have a new priest, even up to now, oh. except I die. Oh. Then they can have a new priest wow. because the dude, the, he had never had a former priest mm. before. Wow. So tell me, are you, were you, now you're back in Liberia, are you able to um, do some work with some of your tribe, ex-tribe members, um, helping the children, bringing them to Christ. Are you able to evangelize to them right uh, now? Since I came back 2007, I came back actually to submit myself to the Truth and Reconciliation okay. uh, to the commissioner. I submitted myself and was very truthful and was able to help bring out the genuineness. Hmm. Because of that, the commission even recommend amnesty, unconditional amnesty for me. Hmm. When the past president, Madam Ellie Sally Johnson, who commissioned the commissioners, were inducted for donating 10,000 to the rebel leader, Charles Taylor. Hmm. I was recommended for amnesty. So because of this, I decided to give back to the nation. Yeah. So I started working with those ex 
Thai soldiers. Mm. And uh, I went in the street, minister to them, mm -hmm. tell them my testimonies. They knew it. I tell them how Jesus had forgiven me mm -hmm. and Jesus could give them a new life and made their parents to accept them mm -hmm. if they accept Jesus. Mm -hmm. Some of them gave me the try. I took, I would take them to a home and uh, keep them for 18 months. Okay. First, I would lead them to Jesus. We conduct their deliverance. We connect them with their families. And then we give them trades, give them different skills for them to be able to take care of themselves. Wow. From 2007 to now, we have affected 530 life wow. with the ritual of uh, 80, 80 to 85 percent success we have had. Mm -hmm. However, 2012, the elders of my tribe came to me, appealing to me to come back uh, because no male could live in my town. They were being killed mysteriously. So they ran away from there, and it's only women that were there. Wow. So they thought I should come back and see how I can appease the gods since I, I was the priest before. Mm. And I told them I have a new God. I could not go back to the old God. Mm. They sent the women who came to appeal, say, well, but then bring your new God to us mm. to see if he can help us and protect us. Yes. Because all we need is just a God. Mm. So I called, asked them to bring the elders back and bring the legal, the, the government representation there who were the commissioners. Mm. And they came and we had this agreement that I would go back if anybody had attacked me physically. My boys were all ex-fighters. My ministers and workers were all ex-fighters. We would fight back physically. Mm. But if they killed me spiritually, there is no claim to it. That is, if their power able to defeat me. Mm. And we went back there and introduced Jesus to the community. Wow. And by the grace of God, mm. they're giving us 3,300 acres. Wow to farm, wow. to do everything, to build churches for them, to build schools for them. As we speak now, there is no school in the region. Children will be about the age of 11, 12 before they go to school because the school is distant yeah. from the, the first elementary school is far from the community. Mm. So they have to be 12, 13 before they start school. So we're trying to build a mission in that community. Uh, even though it's a uh, fully Christian mission. Amen. And by the grace of God, we have this land that we make it, we have turned into our farmland gradually, progressing day after day. So yes, the community invited me. In. I call that mission the Jephthah mission, where in Judges, Jephthah was invited, who was neglected by his own, to fight a wall for them. Hmm. And that after he won the war, they gave him possessions. Wow. And so I call it the Jephthah wow. mission. Wow. wow. But then how do you get funding for this huge project? You're talking about thousands of acres yeah. of land. Well, it's just grace. We have been trying. Uh, we have friends who sometimes share our testimony in churches share our testimony with people mm. and uh, gave us money. They were, mm. they were able to give us some tractors. Even though we 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 trust in God seriously because uh, our our target is to build a place that mm. will host at least 600 people, mm. 480 uh, inmates or uh, uh, clients, as we call them, students yeah. from the street, and 120 staffs. Wow. Out of the 120 staffs, we have a place to build. We already done the plan. We have a place to host at least 30 volunteer, international volunteers, okay. who will come from everywhere in the world to come and help us to teach per time. And as they come, after some time, they teach for three months six months, 
nine months, even one year, all depends what they can volunteer yeah. to yeah. be able to impact into these young people. Uh -huh. Out of the 530 guys, I have uh, 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 trained 48 young men who we all learn everything together. We learn construction, mm -hmm. so we build our own home. We learn agriculture. We learn how to drive. We learn everything. We, people come from America, from Canada, and they, they give us different skills. Mm -hmm. So the 48 of them are going to be mentor to mm -hmm. 10 of the 480 guys per per time, per the dispensation of 18 months. And we trust in God that those, four, those 48 guys will be paid also from the mission. And think even though now every one of us working voluntarily, some of them married and uh, some are not married, they are still young, but we all are basically skilled and trained in almost everything. I can build, I understand agriculture, I can do wedding, I can do featuring, all of that. Wow. Just how every one of them, we go to the class, even though we take the ones that are expert in one area, that are, that are very brilliant in one area and put them in that area, but we can do almost everything. The same approach we had on the front line, we brought it to the body of Christ and by the grace of God, the Lord is helping us. Wow, so we amazing. really, really trust in God yes. for money. And yes. we trust in God, not for money continuously. We're hoping that we can uh, uh, invest in this vibrant uh, agricultural uh, 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 possibilities to be able to sustain ourselves. Yes, yes. So tell us, you have, you have a book. How are people, because, you know, from what you, sh you were sharing, there's, there's so much that you weren't able to cover, obviously, in an hour. So um, how, um, what, how are we able to access your book? Well, uh, if you check on, you check on uh, Amazon, yeah. uh, the book, The Redemption of an African Warlord, yeah. is there. Okay. Since the corona, in fact, since the Ebola, I have not been able to, to reprint, to bring copies of uh, the Joshua Milton Bly story okay. from Nigeria so because I have, not, I have lost contact with my printer, even though I'm trying to get back in contact with him. Mm. Uh, we're also looking for, for possibilities to be able to sell our books, you know, on the internet, yeah. you know, e-copies, but we don't have that technical know-how. We trust in God to bring someone okay. who can manage, you know, the, the already information resources mm -hmm. that we have yeah. to turn it into something. Uh, th that book, everyone who buy it is giving 100% to the project because uh, none of them is for me. I don't have, I don't take a dime from this book. Okay. It goes directly to the project every morning that come from the book sale Amen. so anyone who buy a copy of this book is a way of helping the project so we also hoping that we can have electronic copies yes. we can have you know some of our teachings because uh for four years i was trained as a witchcraft mm. and from being a witchcraft today i'm also uh another priest or higher priest who do, and uh, so I have these deep spiritual teachings. I'm even working on a book called Mastering Your Spirit, yeah. where uh, uh, to make, to teach people how to see in the spirit, mm. to develop your spiritual gifted. But we also have teachings on them. We go from community to community to do these teachings in seminars around Africa, but we're hoping to be able to turn them into something that will benefit the project, especially. Amen. Amen. Do you have a website? Yes, I have a website. Uh, uh, my brother just found it. It's okay. Joshua, www, I think, joshuablai.com. Okay, okay. 
that would be good. Then we'd be able to, people would be able to get in touch with you that way as well. Probably ask questions and, you know, find out how, you know, they can support you. Yeah, so, so that's a good thing. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah you know, last time we met at Vibe FM in Accra, you removed your shirt at the end of the program to show me some lumps on your body from some voodoo stuff you swallowed. <laughs> Are they gone now or are they still there? No, I keep, I'm keeping them there. Wow. I'm keeping them <gasps> there because Whoa. Uh, they are evidence of the past. Mm. Mm. I've, 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 when I went to South Africa, I was invited to talk to the parliament in Cape Town. And uh, I met some very high profile doctors. And I was telling them to see if they can define what is that. And they said, well, it looked like something, but it's quite different anyway. And then I told them what the scars were. And they thought, uh, well, they could offer if I wanted to take out the flesh. And I said, no, it's not hating me. Uh, and I want to keep it as a testimony. Hmm. Wow. Wow. That's you, your testimony is so amazing, you know, and it's just, you know, you've shared so many insights and what kind of advice would you, what, what would you leave us with? What words of uh, advice would you leave, tell us or leave us with? Well, I can tell any man, the spirit word is a huge community, mm. deep. Mm. is deep beyond explanation. Yeah. And so anyone, anyone who encourage you to as little as a grain of sand to practice anything ritualistic, to practice anything mystical, that person have, is trying to sell you, is trying to put you in the world, is trying to put you in a cage that has no door out. Mm. No door out. I would advise anyone. I always told people that I could consider maybe a immoral person than a pastor or a Christian who have a black thread around their hands. Mm. Anyone, no one should practice any sorceries, any form of sorceries. Mm. No one should practice black accent. Mm. No one should practice Masonic crafts. No one should practice witchcraft. If you venture with one little grain of witchcraft, you have exposed your entire family. Wow. The Bible says, the Bible says that woe to the bloody city. It is filled of lies and robbery. Mm. And the prey departed not. It also says, the devil teach people how to advance their witchcraft that they practice in the daytime. Mm. They use it to oppress a man and his house, even the man and his heritage. Man of God. So every time you expose yourself man to of God. spiritual practice. Man of God, sorry, time is really, really gone. But uh, you know what? We're going to have to come back and yeah, get you back in yeah. because there's a lot more to talk That's about. That's right. Concerning the kingdom of God, uh, concerning your experiences, we want to thank you so much. Thank I'll be back you. in touch with you. Thank you. And we, we, we have to do one, one more at least. Thank you Bye so much. God bless you. <laughs> wow. Wow. Serious.